a city that endured for millennia, continuously inhabited until the late 4th century CE, when it was abandoned and buried until its walls were unearthed by a Victorian tourist. These walls once defended the legendary kingdom and hero King Gilgamesh. The columns once blessed by the all-powerful goddess Inanna were called Ishtar. The bricks covered in sand and dust are remnants of an ancient city, the first city in the history of civilization, known as Uruk. Throughout its history, Uruk has achieved several firsts for which all civilizations should be grateful. For example, it produced the first epic tale, the Epic of Gilgamesh, recounting the adventures of the great king. Uruk is also considered the birthplace of writing, or at least the place where writing truly developed. Monumental stone structures like ziggurats, characteristic pyramid-like temples of the Mesopotamian region were built here. The city of Uruk serves as a microcosm of the social revolution that transitioned our ancestors from loosely organized groups of farmers and gatherers to a complex society built upon macro-level social organization and specialization of tasks. Let's explore the location and climate of this city, two closely related factors to the development of Uruk. Uruk, modern-day Warka, lies approximately 300 nautical south of Baghdad and 15 km east of the city of Samawa. This region, once known as Mesopotamia, lies between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, which have become the cradle of several civilizations due to its remarkable fertility. The Sumerians, Assyrians, and Babylonians all flourished here in different historical periods. Uruk prospered in the southern floodplains of Mesopotamia, with rivers and channels traversing the area, where water accumulated to form marshes and swamps, known as the alluvial plain. Being one of the hottest places on Earth with temperatures exceeding 50 degrees Celsius, the unpredictable rainfall led the inhabitants of this marshland to devise irrigation methods that could leverage the nearby river's advantages. The climate of Uruk, in all its harsh beauty, shaped the lives and civilization of its inhabitants. The scorching seasons with prolonged, intense heat and aridity posed a significant challenge to daily life. Plants had to endure glaring sunlight while humans had to employ creativity to devise suitable living arrangements. Along the Euphrates River, water became an invaluable resource, providing irrigation and fertility to the rich soil. However, it also presented a significant challenge in managing water and regulating floods, especially during the rainy season. Consequently, this region gave rise to a diverse array of edible plant species. The domestication of cereals and the geographical proximity to the river facilitated Uruk's development into the largest Sumerian settlement, both in terms of population and area. The surplus of agriculture and the large population base of Uruk facilitated processes of trade exchange, craft specialization, and the development of writing. Writing possibly originating from Uruk around 3300 BCE. Uruk stands as a crucial city on two fronts, religiously and scientifically, a fact confirmed by the thousands of clay tablets excavated, some dating back to the early period with writing around 5,000 years ago. In this invention, Uruk played a pivotal role. Excavations have unveiled a series of significant architectural structures and deposits from the 4th millennium BCE, and this site gave its name to the subsequent period, Ubaid, and followed by the Jamdat Nasur period of ancient Mesopotamia. The Uruk period witnessed the emergence of urban life in Mesopotamia and led to the full-fledged civilization of the early dynastic period. The full extent of Uruk's uniqueness may not have always been recognized at this time. It is now the largest settlement, with the most impressive buildings and earliest evidence of writing. It would be correct to say that Uruk is the first city of Mesopotamia and of the world. It seems to have begun as two separate settlements, Kulaba and Iyana, merging during the Uruk period to form a town covering 80 hectares. At its height during the early dynastic period, its defensive walls stretched 9.5 kilometers, enclosing an area of 450 hectares and could accommodate around 50,000 people. At the city center are two major temple complexes, the Anu Ziggurat, dedicated to the sky god Anu, originally belonging to Kulaba, and the Iana Ziggurat, dedicated to Ishtar, referred to by scholars as the Uruk Jewel, rising to a height of 16 meters on a square base measuring 60 x 60 meters. 
Both complexes reveal a succession of temple structures from the Uruk period, including the White Temple in the Anu Preserve and Limestone Temple in Kalam in the Iana Preserve, a characteristic form of decoration involving the use of cone mosaics with painted tops was applied to buildings, a technique known as clay cone mosaic. To the northwest of the Ayana Preserve lies the Ziggurat, a monumental temple tower of the Uruk period, including a high-stepped pyramid structure built in successive stages with an external staircase and a temple on top, where priests ruled, a design by Urnamu of Ur, during the Ur III period, late 3rd millennium BCE. Evidence from deep trenches excavated in the Iana Preserve shed light on many developments of the Uruk period. Most importantly among these is undoubtedly the development of writing. The earliest clay tablets appear towards the end of the Uruk period. They are simple labels and lists with pictorial signs. Tablets from slightly later levels of the Jamdat Nazar phase show further developments in the proto-cuneiform script of the early dynastic period. The city remained significant throughout the 3rd millennium BCE, but its importance gradually diminished in the later part of that period. It persisted through the following two millennia, until the Parthian period, but only as a minor center. Gradually it depleted natural resources in the surrounding area and ceased to be a political or commercial powerhouse, leading people to abandon this area. Aside from being one of the earliest urban centers in history, Uruk also served as the primary catalyst for urbanization and the formation of states during the Uruk period. The Uruk period is divided into eight phases, from the earliest through the prominent periods to the decline, based on the extent of excavated ruins and the historical context revealed by the artifacts found there. This city had the greatest influence during the period from 4100 to c. 3000 BCE, when Uruk was the largest urban center and served as a hub of commerce and administration. The exact manner in which Uruk ruled the region and how it became the world's first city, as well as how it enforced its authority, remains unclear. This 900-year period witnessed the transition from small agricultural villages to a larger urban center with a full-time bureaucracy, military, and social stratification. Although other settlements coexisted alongside Uruk, they were typically around 10 hectares in size while Uruk was significantly larger and more complex. The culture of the Uruk period was disseminated by Sumerian merchants and settlers, influencing all surrounding peoples and driving the development of competitive economic and cultural systems. Gradually, Uruk was unable to maintain remote control over colonies such as Telbrak through military force. At the heart of the city are the temple districts, gradually developing into the Iana district and the Anu district named after Inanna and Anu. The Anu district was initially called Kulaba, Kularb, or Ung Kulaba, before merging with the Iana district. Kulaba dates back to Eridu, one of the oldest and most important cities of Sumer. There are various explanations for the purpose of the temples, but they are generally believed to symbolize the city's unity, serving both religious and state functions. Records from the Neo-Babylonian period suggest that the temples operated as redistributive intermediaries of wealth. The Iana district comprised several buildings with spaces for assembly, enclosed by walls separating it from the city. In contrast, the Anu district was built on a raised platform with the temple atop it. Iana was the temple dedicated to the worship of Inanna throughout Uruk's history. The remainder of the city and the surrounding districts of Iana and Anu included typical courtyard houses, grouped according to the occupant's professions. Uruk was meticulously planned with a canal system later described as Venice in the Desert. This canal system radiated throughout the city, connecting it to ancient Euphrates riverine trade as well as the agricultural hinterlands. The city of Uruk originally lay to the southwest of the ancient Euphrates River, which has since dried up. Today, the archaeological site of Warka lies to the northeast of the modern Euphrates River. The shift in location occurred due to the changing course of the Euphrates River at various points in history, a factor that may have contributed to the decline of Uruk. The city of Uruk was divided into two parts, the Iana district and the Anu district, named after and dedicated respectively to the goddess Inanna and her grandfather, the god Anu. The famous mask of Warka, 
also known as the Lady of Uruk. A stone-carved female face found in Uruk is considered to resemble Inanna and is likely part of a larger work from one of her temples in her district. The Iana district was surrounded by the rest of the city, but it is unclear whether this was for ceremonial purposes or when the newer Iana district was built. The builders requested a wall for some reason. Scholar Samuel Noah Kramer suggested that Anu, the male deity, initially ruled the city until his daughter Inanna rose to prominence, at which point she was granted a separate walled residence in the Iana district. As the temples were considered the literal abodes of the gods on earth, and because Inanna was often depicted as a goddess, very much in control of her own affairs, the walled-off area may have simply been to provide her with some privacy. Kramer also noted that while Inanna remained a prominent deity throughout Sumer, eventually merging into Ishtar, the power and prestige of goddesses were waning at the time, under the reign of Hammurabi of Babylon, and women were experiencing a decline in power. In this case, perhaps the Iana district was walled off to limit access by male priestly classes. However, like many issues related to the history of Uruk, this theory largely remains speculative. Inanna played a significant role in Uruk's mythological history because she was the one who stole the sacred Meh from her father Enki at the city of Eridu and brought them to Uruk. According to Kramer, the first to translate cuneiform, Meh refers to the divine decrees that formed the basis of Sumerian civilization. As Eridu was considered by the Sumerians to be the city first created by the gods, the transfer of Meh to Uruk symbolize the transfer of power and prestige from one city to another. In the tale of Inanna and the God of Wisdom, Enki made every effort to retrieve the stolen meh and bring them back to Eridu, to no avail. Inanna had outwitted her father, and now Uruk, not Eridu, would be the place of power. Eridu was associated with rural life and the primordial sea where life originated, but Uruk represented a new way of life, a new city, what do you think about the idea of Uruk being the seat of power? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to follow along with more videos exploring ancient history with me. Thank you for your attention and listening.